Welcome to Becoming Limitless. This is the podcast for entrepreneurs who want to optimize their brain and their body with biohacking. I'm going to teach you how to eliminate brain fog and upgrade your health so you can have more productivity, energy, and growth in your business. I'm your host, Tanessa Shears. Let's jump in. Welcome back to the Becoming Limitless podcast. You guys, today we are going to break the cycle of crashing onto the couch at the end of the night, going to bed way too late, and waking up feeling exhausted the next day. And I know how that cycle starts, right? We have a productive day at work or in our business, and we got so much done, but we were like in doing energy all day. And so we were, um, you know, having meetings and writing emails and talking to clients and all of that kind of stuff. And then you go home and you have a whole evening of to do's, right? Like you got to walk your dog or you got to feed your kids. You got to clean the house. You're ready for tomorrow, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And you just look forward to that me time at the end of the night, maybe after the kids go to bed or you've done cleaning and kitchen is clean and you've done the food for the night. But the problem is, is that we never plan to stay up late scrolling on Instagram, right? Or watching TikTok videos. And we don't plan to let episode after episode after episode of Netflix roll. You know, when it kind of starts saying to you like, are you still there? Yes, I'm still here, Netflix. I'm watching this on purpose, right? I mean, it just kind of happens. It's your escape time. And it's the only downtime you actually feel like you get. But at the same time, like there's this weird love-hate relationships with staying up so late every night because you know you don't feel as good the next day. And when you don't feel sharp with your thinking because you're so tired, everything is harder and everything takes longer. And then this whole cycle continues, right? So in today's episode, I'm actually airing one of my most popular masterclasses I have ever done in my business. It has been requested time and time again. It had super high attendance rates and I want to air it on the podcast, right? It was called the how to go to bed on time masterclass. So in this masterclass, the goal is not to make you into a go to sleep on time robot, right? Okay. But my, my goal in this is actually to give you strategies so that you can go to bed on time more often and feel so much better during your work day. And I want to say bye-bye to dragging days. So we're going to hack your evening and we're going to change up all your habits in three parts. And I have a formula called my BED, get it, bed system. <laughs> and it's going to help you feel less wiped out going into your evening so you can master the skill of honoring your bedtime. So I am so excited for you to hear this workshop. I would love for you to come over on Instagram after I'm at Tanessa Shears. Send me a DM. Let me know what your new bedtime is and what you are committed to this week in terms of your head hitting the pillow. I'm excited to talk to you in my DMs and enjoy this training. Hello and welcome to the How to Go to Bed on Time Masterclass. I'm so excited to be having you here today to learn one of the fundamental skills that we think is just one of those things that we should know how to do, yet time and time again, it is one of the biggest things that my my clients and my audience struggle with. So what I'm going to be teaching you today is how to break the cycle of crashing onto the couch in the evening, staying up way too late, messing up your sleep, and feeling tired every single morning. So if we have not met before, welcome. My name is Tanessa Shears. I am a health consultant and I work with entrepreneurs specifically to help them optimize how their brain works and how their body works. And I do that using biohacking so that they can have more productivity, energy, and growth in their business. And so that they can wake up feeling well rested and they can wake and they can have energy throughout the day and they can feel the way they want to feel on their business, feel creative, inspired, and motivated. So this is all what I'm going to be teaching you a part of today. One of the things that I am the most passionate about in my business and in my work as a health consultant is deconstructing the problems that you are facing. So for example, when I had client after client coming to me saying, you know, Tanessa, I'm having trouble right now. I, I, I can't go to bed on time. Like I know I should be doing it but I just can't seem to do it. So what I love to do is construct, deconstruct exactly what 
I am doing that is making it so much easier down the road to be consistent with the habits that you want. And I've literally broken it down into three steps that we're going to be covering today. So the interesting thing is here's what we're not doing today. This is not going to be a masterclass with all of the hacks. So think of things like, you know, well, why don't you just go to bed on time or turn off your screens an hour earlier? That's not what this masterclass is about. This masterclass is actually going to be dealing with the why of that moment when you're sitting there on the couch and you're just like, I should really go to bed right now, but I'm too tired to get off the couch. We've all had that moment and that's probably why you're here. But before we jump in, like one of the things that I really want to honor you with for being here is the fact that you know that this is something you want to work on and it's something you want to do something about. It's obvious that you're probably not feeling your best or you want to start getting into a better routine or you want to start going to sleep on time so that you can actually wake up and have a lot more energy, right? So the fact that you are here today shows yourself that this is a new version of you that you are ready to start seeing results in this area of your life and starting to feel energized. This is the first part. I mean, if we can't go to bed on time, it's going to be so much harder to wake up well rested. So this is the first step. And I'm so glad to have you here. Now, when I was thinking about how the heck, how the heck this problem starts, what I noticed is that my clients spend all of their days doing, and maybe you do this too, right? Like you're super busy during the day. You might be um, answering emails, you're in client meetings, you're meeting with customers, you're responding to messages, you're writing copy, you're do, you have all of this stuff going on during your work day, and it's go, 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 go. You're keeping your business up and running. You're the face of it. You're social media. You're working with your team. You're go, go, go. And you get to the end of your day and you're just feeling so drained, right? You're just like, I am exhausted. And then you get home and there's just more to do, right? I mean, like you have to walk your dog. Um, maybe you you're, you have to tidy up the house. You want to cook dinner. We got to eat dinner. Get the kids off to practice. Put your kids to bed. Go, 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 go. And by the time all of that stuff is done, you really just kind of want to collapse onto the couch, and then you're just like, I need to zone out. I am so tired. I just want to just have some time where I don't have to think. So this is when we probably turn on Netflix and we end up watching a couple episodes or, you know, we start scrolling on our phone or watching YouTube videos and we totally have intentions to go to bed on time, right? Because who really wants to wake up feeling tired every day? But the thing is, it just feels so good to sit there. And so good not to think and so good to have you time where you're not a parent, you're not a business owner, you're not a coach, you're not, you know, a CEO, you're not doing all these things. You just get to zone out. And when that time comes where your clock is like, it's bedtime, you're just like, I don't feel like I have enough me time. I feel like I just want to sit here again. So you're like, you know what I'll do? I'll just wait until the end of this episode. That's what I'll do. And then I'll go to bed. And then the end of the episode comes. And if you're like me, this is what I do. Just until the introduction of the next episode starts. You know, when like the title flashes across. And then you're just like, I might as well finish this episode. And then it's like an hour or two later. And you've missed your bedtime, right? Or you're scrolling on Instagram and you tell yourself, just 10 more minutes. I'm just going to look at one more post. And then it's literally like an hour has gone by. Like, has this happened to you? right? And then we just end up going to sleep really late. We don't get enough sleep. We wake up feeling groggy and tired and our brains don't work and we're irritated and we end up in this cycle. And I don't want that for you because I know what it feels like to have been there. I mean, before I had my daughter, I would stay out all the time to random times of the night. Bedtime was inconsistent. Um, and we wake up, you know, I wanted to be a morning person, right? So I'd wake up at 6 a.m. to go to the gym, but then it would wipe me out so much from waking up that the rest of the days I would sleep until 7.30 or 8.30. And my bedtime was like super inconsistent. And it was always changing and I was so tired all the time. I even remember when I started having contractions with my daughter when I was pregnant, I remember where I was. I was actually out at my mom's house at 10.45 p.m. at night because I was, it, it just never occurred to me how much my sleep was affecting everything. And when my daughter was born and she was a couple of months old, I realized something huge. I realized that if I wanted to get more sleep, 
I needed to start honoring a consistent bedtime because that was literally the only thing I could control. I couldn't control how many times I had to be up during the night with her. I had, couldn't control, you know, if my cat was howling in the middle of the night waking up. I couldn't control so much of that, but what I could control was my bedtime. And over the months, as my daughter started sleeping through the night, I kept firm to my bedtime. And I was like, I'm holding on to this. And what I found was that by holding firm to my bedtime, I would naturally wake up when my body had gotten enough rest. Sometimes it was seven hours, sometimes it was seven and a half, sometimes it was eight and a half hours. But what I recognized was that by allowing myself to consistently get enough sleep, I always felt well rested. Like 90% of the time, I feel clear and sharp and focused. And if the biggest thing, like if you just take this one thing away from this masterclass today, I want it to be this. Honoring a consistent bedtime is such a, a bigger and more impactful habit than waking up at the same time every single day. Such a more impactful habit for you because that is ensuring you get consistent bedtime because we can't always control when we wake up, especially if we have dogs or if we have kids, you know, or sometimes our work schedule changes in the morning. But what we can always honor is our bedtime. So the skills I'm going to teach you today are going to help you develop that super consistent bedtime. All right. So let's jump into the strategy and the solution. So I have basically deconstructed this process in my head and I was like, okay, you know what it is? It's not really anything to do with the bedtime that helps me go to sleep on time. It's actually looking at what's going on during the day. So I've broken it down into a three-step process, which is going to be super easy for you to remember because the acronym is BED. B-E-D as in how to go to bed on time. All right, so we're going to be hacking your whole day and primarily your evening into three parts. And the whole point of this is to help you feel less wiped out so that you can, you know, sail into your night and you feel energized and you get the most out of your me time. And so that when bedtime comes, you have that skill set of honoring your bedtime. So three parts. All right. Okay. I'm just going to grab a drink of water before we jump in here. All right. So let's start with B. What does B in our bed process stand for when it comes to how to go to bed on time? Well, B is going to stand for balancing your energy and specifically we're talking about balancing your energy during the day. So as entrepreneurs, and I mean, I've worked with so many entrepreneurs to be able to clearly say this is that we get stuck in the doing energy all day and it is absolutely exhausting and it causes us to get to the end of our day and feel completely drained. Now, when you're talking about one of the things we talk about right off the top is what is the difference between feeling exhausted and drained and there's something we can do about it and feeling naturally tired, right? So when we're talking about the idea of feeling naturally tired, it is something that gradually, progressively, and almost gently comes on as you get closer to bed. So in general, after you've been awake about 12 to 14 hours, you're going to start to notice a decrease in your energy. And I don't mean like a sudden wall that you hit, and I'm talking just like a gradual gentle decrease in energy, all right? So that's what it feels like to get tired. As you near that 14 to 16 hour before bed mark, you should start to feel sleepy in a way that feels good. There's a difference between feeling like that good kind of tired when you're cuddled up versus feeling completely devoid of all energy in general, all right? So that's what it feels like to be tired. Now, if you're looking at what it feels like to be exhausted and brain fog and drained, it's almost as if you never had that energy you wanted to begin with. The whole day kind of drags and it feels just like, almost just like you're, there's a heaviness in your head and a fogginess and your thinking isn't clear and you're not focused, you're forgetting things, you don't feel inspired or creative, you're easily confused, trouble making decisions and it kind of persists all day long and especially after that afternoon wall that we hit. So I'm talking about, you know, that two to three PM kind of when everyone says I have that afternoon energy crash, that is not a natural tire. And that is something you can do about. So what is causing this? Well, like I said, when we look at what our days are doing, they are completely spent doing all day long. Doing, 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 doing. It's one thing after the other. It's dropping somebody off, picking somebody up, making a to-do list, running to the grocery store, answering an email on a meeting, booking a client call, rescheduling, meeting with clients, blah, blah, blah. Like it is literally, oh, and just as you, I hate this one. You send out an email, oh my gosh, off my to-do list, inbox zero, they respond back and it's back on your to-do list again. Like 
It is nonstop go. And you're finding that your brain is literally just exhausted. So what I really want you to understand is when I say that B in our bed process stands for balancing your energies, you have to understand what the two energies are. And like I said, we're always stuck in the doing energy. So if you feel anxious during your day or in the afternoon or when you're laying there at night, or if you wake up at 3 or 4 a.m. in the morning and you just have this anxiety that you cannot curb, that's your body stuck in doing energy. Doing energy is structure. It is planning. It is organizing. It is checking your emails just in case somebody messaged you, just in case a client needed to get a hold of you, just in case there was some big emergency fire that you had to put out. This is being stuck in doing energy. It's sitting at the dinner table and like with your phone under the table, checking your email or logging onto Instagram. It's in those moments when you're bored that you just can't deal with being with yourself and you, and you log on Instagram just to have something to look at. Or if you're chronically waking up at 4 a.m. or 3.30 a.m. and you just like are... All right, we're back. I don't know what happened. Facebook just shut down, but we are, are back. So let's continue. I hope you can jump in and find that where we left off if you missed out on this. So what we were talking about is the idea that if you're waking up at 4 a.m. in the middle of the night and you're staring at the ceiling and you're having trouble falling back to sleep consistently and you're tossing and you're turning and your brain feels on, like you wake up and you are awake. That is your brain being stuck in doing energy and you feel like you have to control everything. This is you being stuck in doing energy. Now, this might be productive for you in your business in terms of like getting stuff done, but this is not a way to live a life because living in this constant state of cortisol, high cortisol, stress, overwhelm, anxiety is terrible for your brain. It is terrible for your body and exhausts you to the point where sometimes it just feels like you're never going to escape. So let's contrast that. What the heck does being energy mean? If we're usually doing, what does it mean to be? So being energy is when you are following your intuition. It's something, it's kind of one of those things where you're like, I just feel like doing this today. I feel like working on this today. This feels really good. It's that feeling when you're with your family and you just feel so grounded and present and there's connectedness and joy. This is what it feels like to be in being energy. You're connected in with your emotions and, and you feel centered and you don't feel in your head. You're not worrying about the future and your business and everything else. You allow for rest and recovery and naps during the day. And when you're in a conversation, you are listening to what the other person is saying instead of also working on your to-do list in your head, thinking about a client and also waiting to respond. This is what it means to be in being energy. And very few entrepreneurs I know sway over to the being energy side. We are very often caught in the doing energy side of things. So why do we get stuck in the doing energy? Because we are rewarded for it. Our self-worth has become based on how much we can get done, how many things we can cram into a week, how many clients we can see, how much money we can make, how big we can grow our business, how many team members we can take on. Our self-worth becomes completely wrapped up in our business and in these success milestones and in being productive and in staying busy. And we put so much value on being productive and busy that we are, are literally our nervous systems get lodged into this emotional state of doing and we get so trapped in it that we cannot break out of it. And we think our results are based on this productivity and based on this like, go, 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 do all this, be the super mom or the super parent and be the super partner and be the super business owner. And we keep doing, doing, doing because it's kind of worked for us and people keep telling us, good job. You're doing a good job. And we keep doing all of this to avoid feeling. Now, one of the most amazing questions I ever asked myself when I realized that I was stuck in doing all the time was this, why are you afraid to slow down? 
if our value and our worth is tied up in how busy we are during the day, it totally makes sense why we feel that we need to stay engaged with being busy and productive in order to feel like we have value and worth. Why are you afraid to slow down? Why can't you let go? This energy, and I know the point of this masterclass is how to go to bed on time, but I want you to recognize this. Part of the reason that you're not going to bed on time is because of your inability to slow down. And we need to solve this first. Like I said, I'm not teaching you a bunch of hacks on turning out your lights an hour earlier and here's the perfect wind down routine. I'm actually addressing the problem for you, which is why are we afraid to slow down? What are we afraid of feeling? And I know when I answered this question for myself, you know what it was? I had decided for myself at that time that the only way to succeed was by going at lightning speed like this. And if I slowed down, my business success would slow down. And what I had to realize is that I needed to find a middle. I needed to find a middle between that doing energy and that being energy. And that was actually where not only was I happiest, but for two successful years in a row, my business revenue has doubled taking more time off. And and here's the thing. I'm not one of those people that's going to advocate to you that you don't work hard and it's not a lot of work to grow a business because 100% it is. I work very hard. I am very productive and I am very consistent. However, learning how to have a middle is so important. And here's the difference. Your middle and my middle are going to be different. So if here's doing energy and here's being energy, maybe your perfect balance is here. Maybe it's here, maybe it's here, but the point is you need to find out what works best for you. So what is the solution to balancing your energy? You need to create intentional space in your day to be. You need to step out of feeling like your worth and your value and your growth and your success and your wins are based on how much you can get done in a day. We need to create intentional space. Space between our meetings, space for our lunch, space for tasks in the day, between the meetings we have. And I mean, I've been guilty of it too, of running six or seven client meetings, back to 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 back. Yes, it's productive. Yes, it saves time. But doing that day after day after day, you'll feel drained. And you're going to find you're walking into your evening where you're wanting to spend this time with your family, feeling so drained that you can't even get to enjoy the life that you really wanted to create for yourself, right? The freedom, the decision to choose your hours, but you're just not present when you're with your family because your brain is so busy doing. So how, how can we, how can we add more of the being energy? Well, it's by movement, feeling present actually eating your food without also typing on your computer, eating your food, stretching, checking in emotionally with yourself. How many times during your day do you say to yourself, hey, how am I feeling right now? Oh, look at that. I have a little tension in my neck. I didn't even notice that. Where are you holding your tension right now? Do a quick body scan for me. Take a deep breath. Feel your body right now. What do you feel? Are your shoulders up? Are your jaws tight? Is your back stiff? Are your legs or your glutes squeezed right now? I can feel a little bit in my feet right now. How are you feeling? Check in. Now let it go. Let it go. This is the kind of thing I mean by needing to check in with ourselves during the day. We need to make sure that we are taking care of our emotional health and our mental health so that we do not overstimulate our nervous system and then we get stuck in fight or flight and we are always panicking and 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 feeling that energy that makes us run into our evening and feel entirely drained. Now, you do need to plan this in because that helps because that's our doing energy, right? So we needing to plan this in. Now, here is a here are a couple suggestions on things you can do during your workday to really help you Get more into that being energy. Now, I'm not saying you have to stay there, but just you need to be interspersing this throughout your day. So here's a really good one. Take these two fingers. Put them on the inside of your wrist, 
just right here, like this. Don't use your thumb, but this one here. And I want you to just take your pulse. 30 seconds between meeting. What is it? Is it fast? Is it slow? Is it inconsistent? Is it regular? Feeling your pulse really allows you to connect with how you're feeling. And feeling your pulse allows you to take a moment where you have to feel. You physically feel your pulse under your fingertips. You have to pay attention to how you're breathing. I mean, I don't know any people that will sit there thinking about the to-do list and taking your pulse. It's very hard to concentrate on the two. So you need to find ways to balance the being and the doing energy. Another one, get up, do a 30 second quick stretch. Twist your back, stretch out your legs, roll your shoulders back, shake out your energy. Do one of those quick body scans. Take some time to do that. Do a quick thought download. Maybe you have a notepad on the side of your desk where for two minutes every two hours or hour or three hours, you write down the thoughts that are in your head right now. And just get them out there. Like, I'm worried I'm not going to get this done. I have to pick up my kid. I do all this stuff here. And you write those things down. Just practice getting them out of your head or ask yourself a question. How do I feel right now? And then write on it for one minute. Or just think about it. If we don't want to write it down, just think about it. Or, heck, plan a 10-minute walk in the middle of your day. It is something that we take for granted, the fact that we sit at our desk all day. If we want to get back into our bodies, move your body, right? Or another really good one that I like is go for a nap. Plan a nap into your work day. And I'm talking just something 10, 20 minutes where you can rest, check in with your body, close your eyes. People even like to meditate, do some breathing. There are so many ways to slow down, okay? But you need to plan this in. And here, here's the thing that I want you to hear most important about this. Don't be afraid to slow down because being and doing together, it gets to work. It gets to create success. And one of the false beliefs that I used to have was that when I stopped working, I stopped seeing results. This is what I used to think. If I don't hustle, hustle, go, 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 always stay like this, then my business is going to start, you know, I'm not going to make as much money each month. And you start getting into that panicking mode. But once I realized that, if I balance my doing and my being energies, they both get to work. And I have seen it firsthand. My business has grown more and more because I am in a place where I feel good and I have more to give to my clients. I have more to give to my business. I am nicer. I, I just feel better and happier and more healthy and more vibrant because I'm not so overwhelmed and anxious all the time. So... This is something that I really want you to consider. We're talking about be balancing your energy. You know what the two are. I gave you some ideas. It doesn't have to be a two-hour block in the middle of your day to sit there and meditate. I'm talking about take your pulse for 30 seconds. Ask yourself how you're feeling. Do a quick body scan. Get into your body and out of your head. It is your responsibility to your business to show up in the most effective way. And if it's not working for you right now and you're not getting enough sleep, this is where you start. So we're starting by hacking actual day. So that's your first one. Now let's go talk about number two. Number two is E in our bed strategy. So we have balancing your energies. E is going to be eliminating your just eliminating your distractions. So what's the problem here? So let's say you balance your energies, right? And you get to the end of the day and you have your evening tasks, you walk your dog, you feed your kids, you do, you know, tidy up the kitchen, throw a lot of laundry, whatever it might be, okay? Now when it comes to me time, that is one of the reasons I hear over and over again that we end up staying up past our bedtime. It's because we feel like we need to zone out. We feel like we need need more downtime or more me time or time where our brain is off and we're not engaged with our businesses anymore. We feel like we need more of that time, but it never feels the way we want it to. It's like we don't ever get that feeling we want. So I'm going to give you an example with a client that I have right now. Uh, she has three hours after her dinner time between when she has scheduled to go to bed. And this same problem she experiences on the weekends as well. Like she'll have an entire Saturday free and she'll go into her weekend like, yeah, I'm so ready to get refreshed and recharged. This weekend is going to be fantastic. I'm going to come back on Monday. I'm going to be a whole different person. I'm going to be so charged and it's going to be fantastic. But she gets to the end of her me time and it's bedtime. Or she gets to the end of her Saturday or her weekend and she wakes up Monday morning and she's like, damn it, I don't feel refreshed at all. And I had all this me time. How many times have you felt that? You like designate, you have your me time, 
but you just wake up feeling like crap. And you never feel refreshed and recharged. Why is that? If you have three hours where you're just mindlessly watching TV between, you know, the end of your evening and bedtime, why don't you feel rested and recharged and refreshed and like you had that time for me time? Well, because your me time is spent escaping instead of doing what it is meant to do, and that is recharge you. I'm going to say that again. If you are feeling like you get to the end of your me time and you need to stay up because you haven't had enough of it, or you go through a whole weekend where you had nothing planned, and you get to Monday and you don't feel well rested and recharged, it was because you spent your weekend or your evening doing things that were escaping your life instead of doing what they were meant to do, which is recharge you. Now, this is where the concept of a buffer comes in. And I learned this from a mentor of mine, Brooke Castillo. She talks about this concept called a buffer. And a buffer is something we do to escape what we're feeling. So think about this. Me time is often a reaction to feeling like we're so drained and exhausted during our day, right? So we have this me time. So what do we do? We feel drained and tired and exhausted or frustrated or overwhelmed from our day or just like, I just don't want to think about it anymore. And this feels freaking terrible. So what do we do? Well, we sit back on the couch, we flip on some Netflix and we watch. And then you know that weird phase where you like, okay, I've watched all my shows. I'm up to date. And now you're just kind of clicking on things, trying to find something to like you're watching something, you're really not that interested. And then here's the kicker. You're, you kind of don't really care what you're watching, or maybe you do, and you're scrolling on your phone as well. So you're not really paying attention. You're on your phone. You're not paying attention to anything on your phone because you're just scrolling Instagram because you have to distract yourself from the distraction in the first place because you're so exhausted with how you feel. It's, is it really any wonder that we don't want to go to bed? We just want to lay there and think maybe more of this will help me feel better or maybe just a weekend off. Like I have a client that says all the time, I just need some time off. And I always say to her like, yeah, time off is great, but why don't you feel refreshed after a weekend of doing nothing? Why do you need a whole week off, right? So we never feel like we have enough time to recharge and we don't ever feel the way we want to feel. So we stay up later and later and later to get more of it, right? And we want that me time and we don't want to have to sacrifice that. Like it, why should we as adults have to go to bed on time when I could just stay up later? Well, it's because we also don't want to feel like this every single day. So we're stuck in this cycle and we don't know how to break it. So that's what we're talking about. But like I said, we're so distracted all the time. So I asked my client, what would you like to be doing? Like, what would you like to be doing during your downtime? Like, if you picture this, let's pretend you had a whole Saturday with no responsibilities where you literally didn't have to think about work and it was all taken care of. You didn't have to worry. And you had no kids or no partner or no dogs to walk. Like, you had no responsibility. What would you love to spend the day doing? And I can guarantee not one person would say, I would love to spend the whole day scrolling on Instagram mindlessly, no purpose, just consuming. None of us say that, right? So I asked my client, let's make a list. What, do you, what would you love to do that would light you up? Like things that you haven't done in a while. And she's like, oh my gosh, well, I have this bookmark tab on my browser with all of these blogs that I've saved that I would love. I have that too. I have so many tabs or like um, bookmarks that are like sleep articles that I really want to read, nutrition articles, uh, all kinds of biohacking articles. Like I have that list too, you know, the, or those books that you really want to read. You know, you've gotten like six of them in your cupboard and you've only read one of them and you really would like to get around to them one day. Or like reading a book or like some people genuinely enjoy cooking. Not like necessarily batch meal prepping, but just the art of cooking. Or maybe there's an online course that you bought and you really like to go through it. Or maybe maybe you want to do gardening. You know, these are things that when you think about them now are good for your soul, are good for that being energy, are good for helping you feel refreshed and recharged. They're things you actually enjoy doing, but you are too tired to do. Think about this. All of these things in your life that you want to do, honestly, I mean, organize a closet. Get rid of your old socks. Go shopping and get yourself a new wardrobe. 
catch up on a pile of magazines, all of those things that we would love to do. I would like to write more, maybe paint my nails, but we never do them because we're so tired. And so what we do during our downtime creates more tired and set up stuff that recharges and refuels us. So this is what I want you to think about. When I, I actually sat down when I was, you know, writing out the outline for this, I was like, I'm going to make a list of the things that truly recharge me. And I have a list of them here, and mine are reading. I'm one of those people with more books than I'll probably ever have time to read in a lifetime. Um, I love doing skin treatments. I'm nothing fancy. I don't know much about it, but I just like the idea of maybe taking a derma roller to my face or, you know, exfoliating a little bit. I love doing puzzles. I love doing puzzles. It's one of those things that I forget how much I love until I'm sitting there and I just recognize that my mind gets to let go. I love to watch TV specifically. I love to watch Real Housewives. Bravo, all of those shows. I really do enjoy those. They, they're entertaining for me. I love online courses. I love learning about investing. Oh my gosh. I could watch videos on different types of investing and learning. I love to work out and move. I like to walk. I like to, I like to light candles and tidy my house at the same time and make a cup of tea. It just makes me feel this way. I don't know how to describe it. Just, just like I'm really in the life that I'm living and I love to garden and I love to plan time just to nap. I don't always fall asleep, but sometimes I'll leave half an hour just to lay down and close my eyes and try to fall asleep. And I love to talk to my husband. These are all things that make me feel recharged and refreshed and notice in there. I still have TV in there. Like I'm not here saying Instagram is bad, TV is bad, but I still have TV in there, but I am intentionally watching an episode. I'm watching what's happening. I'm laughing or crying depending on the episode. I'm not also sitting there scrolling my phone and then at the same time like worrying. I'm like, I should really be working right now. Like I am present for that episode of Real Housewives of Potomac. Like that is where I am. My phone is down. I actually enjoy what I'm watching. So I want you to ask yourself, how do you want to feel from your me time? Hmm? How do you want to feel? during your downtime. And you don't need to necessarily choose refreshed and recharged. Maybe it's you just want to feel calm. You want to feel peaceful. You want to feel happy. You want to feel present. Now, what do you like to do that creates that? Because I can guarantee it's mindless TV watching and escaping is not it. Mindless eating while you're TV watching, Instagram scrolling, all of that. It's not intentional and it doesn't feel good. So here's the thing, if what you are doing during your me time at the end of the night or on your weekend isn't making you feel that way, try something new. I know, even if you just gave it one week, what if instead of escaping how tired you feel, you did something that you always wanted to have time to do? And I want you to see how your life changed when you realize that you actually do have time for the things you love and the things you enjoy. Because I can tell you, if I'm just kind of doing that mindless TV watching, three or four hours can go by and I still feel like a slug. I just feel icky and I ugh, am lethargic and tired and I don't enjoy it. But if I have spent that hour with a cup of tea and I have spent it reading a book and I have spent it connecting with my partner, I'm going to tell you, an hour feels like so much. It feels so expansive. It feels like so much time. So that's something I want you to consider is that you're, you may be feeling like you need to stay up past your bedtime and have more me time and you didn't get enough time to yourself because you might not be using it in a way that actually benefits you. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We are um, I'm going to address two little things on that point before we go on to the last one. So um, if you are spending that time before bed with your partner, so one of the things I hear sometimes is like, well, that time before bed and, you know, when I stay up, that's actually time that I spend with my partner. Like, that's kind of important time. Um, but I feel like if I go to bed earlier than them, then I'm not going to actually get to um, spend that quality time with them that I want or, you know, I just don't get to see them during the day. I want you to ask yourself this. The time that you are currently spending with them, 
Is it serving your relationship in the same way that your me time is serving you? Because here's the thing, if you want that time to connect with your partner, what does that mean to connect with them? Is it conversations? Is it a board game? Is it planning for your future? Or is it honestly laughing and bonding over a good TV show together? Because if you're sitting there watching a TV show, also scrolling your phone saying, I don't have enough time to connect with my partner, you're going to feel like you don't have time to connect your partner. So always looking at the intentional um, part of that time. Now, the other thing that um, I heard from clients before as something that they struggle with is the idea of what if I have to go to bed before my family? Like my family all goes to bed at 1130 and I want to start going to bed at 1030. Like that's so weird if I have to go to bed before everybody and everyone's staying up and I'm missing out and everything like that. Here's my question to you. Can you be more present with them? earlier on in the evening. It's that same concept we keep coming back to. Are you making the most out of the time that you have with them so that you feel like you're rewarded? Like if you're spending two or three hours through that whole dinner time rush, maybe you're driving your kids to sports, maybe you're eating dinner with your partner, like do you feel present during that time? Because it goes back to that same, that same thing. Like you'll feel like you're not missing out on family time if you actually enjoy the time you are with them even more. So that is E. So eliminating distractions during your downtime, your me time, your partner time, so that you feel rested, refreshed, and recharged so that when bedtime comes, you're not like, I don't feel the way I want to feel, so I want to stay up. All right? Okay. One more to go. Let's talk about D. B was balance your energy. E was eliminate distractions. D, direct your brain. Direct your brain. Okay, so this is this is where you know rubber meets the road. So we've already dealt with our first strategy, which was how to not feel completely drained and exhausted at the end of every workday, so that when you go into the evening, you have the energy you need to do the stuff that makes you feel refreshed and recharged. So see how we're taking care of your day, so we're not feeling so terrible all day long. Now we got to set a bedtime and a bedtime trigger. So we probably all have times we want to go to bed, right? Like, everybody's is different. It's going to depend on your lifestyle and what goes on in your household and what time you need to wake up. It goes, it, a lot of things are going to go into it. I'm going to share mine. Um, I do go to bed really early and wake up really early, and I'm not saying that this is the way you need to do it to be right. I'm just giving you my example. So my bedtime, like, lights out is between 8.30 and 9 at night. I also wake up at 5, so keep this in mind. But 8.30 to 9 at night. So... If I decided that that is my bedtime, my lights go out between that time, I need to now decide on what I call a shutdown trigger. So something that happens in my environment, whether I create it or the environment creates it, that cues my brain, okay, it's time to start unwinding, I'm going to pull away from the TV, closing down the night, time to start getting the teeth brush, pajamas on, everything's down like that. So this is something that is going to be happening on a nightly basis so that you can decide, okay, that's my cue to exit me time and start winding down. So mine is that time that we need to get my daughter ready for bed. So just to give you an idea of our evening, my husband gets home around 5. I usually have my daughter or he'll bring her home. We spend 5 to 7.30 together as a family. We hang out, we cook dinner, we have dinner, we play. But when 7.30 comes... That is the time that we have decided as a family that the TV goes off no matter what because it is now time to start getting ready for bed and also it helps us get our daughter to bed on time. So during that time at 7.30, that's when we all go upstairs and that's when we get that process of winding down and it is non-negotiable every night. So here's some other ideas you can have for your shutdown trigger and there's no right or wrong. You just experiment with one. If it works, great, keep it. If it doesn't, try something new. It's all right, we can experiment. That's not always going to work on our first try. So when your TV show ends, that is a great one. So if you're just like, when I get to the end of this episode, I'm going to bed. If you mean it, great. And this also works really well if you have cable still. And you know shows actually have an end time. It's not like on Netflix when you can start them whenever. But if your show actually ends at 9, maybe that's your trigger. Go upstairs and start getting ready. Or maybe you have an alarm that's just set on your phone for a certain time, and that is the trigger. It's an audible alarm that you hear. Or maybe it's after an hour of me time, or after an hour of TV time, and you set it more as like a an amount of time you spend having partner time, me time, alone time, and then you go to bed. 
Or maybe it's always like I, what I do after your kids go to bed. I have a client who walks her dogs. That's the last thing she does before bed. So she knows that in order to get to bed on time, she has to walk her dogs by 8 o'clock each night. And that is her trigger. And she's like, okay, TV shut down for the night. Walk the dogs. And after that, I go to bed. So now that you have your bedtime trigger and you need to decide on that, here's what's going to happen. Bedtime is going to come. And here's what your brain is going to say. No. No, I don't want to. And then you're going to tell yourself, oh, we're doing this again. But I really want to feel better. I should probably go to bed right now. And your brain's like, no, I don't want to get off the couch. I'm too tired. I'm too warm. This is, the house is cold. I just want to watch the end of this episode. I'm an adult. I shouldn't have to do any of this. Even though the other side of your brain is like, but why do you keep doing this? You feel so tired every day, right? That's that fight. You know that fight where you have that, oh, like, oh, I should go to bed. I'm too tired. I should go to bed. I'm too tired. We're trying to end that fight. So when you have that conversation in your head, what feeling is coming up in your body? I want you to ask yourself that. So a feeling is something that you feel in your stomach, in your chest, um, in your posture, in your body language, just how the vibration in your body. A feeling is not a sentence that forms in your head, okay? What it is, is it is going to be an emotion, a single word. So if I say, what are you feeling when your brain starts fighting with itself? You probably feel things like, I want to be defiant. I don't want to be told what to do. I I feel rebellious. I feel exhausted. These are coming up, all of these emotions, because of words that are going on in your head. Literally, that fight back and forth is created by your thinking. And that's a really cool thing to realize because as soon as you realize that the words in your head are controlling the feelings that you're feeling and the feelings that you're feeling are dictating whether or not you get off the couch or stay there for another two episodes, you're like, oh, that's interesting because you can control how you think. And if this is a new idea to you, you're like, what? No. No. I can't control it, but you actually can. It just takes practice. Like you can literally tell yourself how you want to think. So the first thing I'm going to get you to do, you know how when we said that when you start having that argument with yourself, I should probably go to bed. I don't want to. Those feelings come up. I feel like icky, rebellious, frustrated. I don't want to go to bed. Now I'm going to teach you how to do something called surfing the urge. It is one of the most powerful skills that you are going to learn when it comes to any type of emotion that comes up that you don't like that is consistently getting you to do things you said you didn't want to do. Okay. so. I want you to think about this. We're talking about surfing in Earth. Now, I want you to picture surfing. Surfing, uh, standing on your surfboard, or maybe you're laying on it. I don't know. I've never surfed, but I kind of get the idea. So there is a swell where the water comes up, and then it crests, and it forms a wave. Now, I want you to picture that when your brain starts fighting with you about staying on the couch, that that same process is happening. You're getting that swell. That's that conversation is kicking up. That emotion is coming up okay, I really don't like this. I'm really uncomfortable right now. And usually when we stay on the couch, it makes that feeling go away. But what I want you to do is just stay with it. You do not need to make that feeling go away. Feeling that feeling of frustration or rebellion or pushback or whatever you're feeling in that moment is the trigger that you are at the precipice of taking a step towards who you want to be or away. It's a great signal. So we're just going to let it pass. Just like that wave would come up under your surfboard and it would pass. You need to allow that feeling to be there without trying to get rid of it. It doesn't feel very good. Now, the beautiful thing is the other thing that that feeling, that wave, that crest is a trigger for is allowing you to put a pause between, I don't like how I'm feeling. It's okay. I'm just going to watch another episode. Putting a pause in between that decision. So that moment comes up where you're like, I don't really want to go to bed. And instead of just being like, I'm just going to stay up, pause. Okay. I notice I'm in this moment now where I don't have to make a decision right now. Just give it a minute. Feel that uncomfortable feeling and know that you are in control of that decision. Instead of making reactive decisions based on feelings that come up, you now get to be like, oh, this is interesting. I'm in one of those places where I get to make a decision. I have just put a pause between the feeling I don't like and the decision to escape that feeling, which is usually just stay on the couch or keep scrolling Instagram. Because you know that discomfort when you're like, I should put down my phone, but I don't want to, right? Notice that conversation in your mind. That resistance you're feeling is just putting your phone down. 
or just to getting off the couch. So once you are in motion, once you have made that, you feel the discomfort, you notice what's going on, you can hear that conversation, you have put a pause between that feeling and your reaction, now it's time for you to be okay with being uncomfortable. Getting off that couch or putting down your phone is not going to feel good the first couple times. And honestly, to this day still, there's times where I'm like, I don't want to get up off the couch. I just want to like, just want to watch some more TV. But that, that, that discomfort of actually following through on something is so minimal compared to what we have it in our head. And what I want you to do over the next week is to show yourself that when you say it's fine, I'm going to go to bed on time, that it's not as terrible as our brains make it out to be. And we don't get stuck feeling terrible forever and ever. It passes just like that wave that crests and goes away. So does that feeling of terrible because once you are off the couch or once your phone is down and you are in motion, it's easy to keep following through. But you have to first get up on your board and surf that feeling for the flow to come afterwards. So. Your job is to recognize that those feelings that come up are not reason to continue distracting yourself. They are your trigger that this is your opportunity for growth. You put a pause in there and you make a different decision. They are a clue that you are doing better. They are a clue that growth is happening. And that is a wonderful thing because one of the questions I always like to ask myself is like, does scrolling 20 more minutes or... Does it really feel better than waking up well rested? Like I actually have to ask myself questions like that, directing my brain and my thinking. Uh, sitting here and watching five more minutes of the show, is this actually going to make me feel better tomorrow? Is it actually going to make me feel the way, or is it just going to keep me in this cycle of feeling tired, drained, exhausted, and all of that? So what I want you to do is answer that. And I want you to bring awareness that your brain is creating this fight to not get off the couch every night. That is so key to see that. Why are you doing that? Why are your, is your brain engaging in that? And better questions. Yeah, if, if getting well, well rested is something you really want, why are you prioritizing it over that small discomfort of going to bed at time? And are you willing to face that mild discomfort of just getting up so that you can start feeling better every single day? And surfing that urge really helps you to cement this habit in place and expecting that that discomfort is going to come up instead of meeting with that discomfort of, uh, and being like, what is going on? Something must be wrong, right? And so just to wrap that up, there's one more thing I really want you to think about that has helped me transform so many areas of my life from parenthood to getting to bed on time to being a business owner. The question I want you to ask yourself right now as we wrap this up is who do you need to be to get to bed on time? Now, I know this seems like a very profound question for such a trivial thing as going to bed on time, but who do you need to be? Who do you need to embody? Who do you need to become to stop staying up past your bedtime and creating that cycle of waking up tired, feeling unmotivated, frustrated, irritated, wishing you felt better in your day, wondering why you're so tired all the time and, and missing out on all of the things that you're missing out on in your life because you're tired. What projects don't you have the energy to take on? What would you love to be doing after work with your family that you just don't have the energy to and all you can do is crash into the couch? What are those things during your me time that you're not ever making time for because we're so busy escaping feeling tired? Who do you need to be to start today to make that decision to overcome that discomfort and get off the couch and go to bed? Who do you need to be? Do you need to be someone that is consistent? Do you need to be someone that honors their word? Do you need to be someone that values and prioritizes their health? Do you need to be someone who is focused or do you need to be someone who is present or intentional with their time or, or proud of their health? Like who do you need to be? Because we often, I find we get it all the time. I get people that'll come in and be like, tell me how to go to bed on time. Right? Cause that's why we're here at the how when I gave you the how. Right? It's balance your energy, eliminate distractions during your downtime and direct your brain. 
You have a bedtime. You need to honor it. It's going to be uncomfortable. Yeah, that's the how. But who do you need to be to follow through on that bed process for the rest of the week? Because I can give you hows all day long. But you need to really embody and, and get grounded with the person you will be if you follow through all the time. So here's the kind of way I like to think about it if you're getting stuck on this. I want you to picture you a month from now and you've gone to bed on time, let's say 27 of the last 30 days. And you feel pretty dang good because you're getting a lot more sleep than you used to. It may not be perfect, but you're feeling pretty good. And you're proud of yourself. Who's that person? What? What did, what, what did they have to do in order to, all along this whole journey, make sure you got to bed on time? What did they have to do differently? Who were they? What did they stand for? What were their values? Embodying that, whoever you think that is, yours is going to be different than mine. You have to lean into that, become that, and embody that. Because by doing that, you will be consistent at going to bed on time. You will create a sustainable evening routine that feels good. You will have the energy when you wake up the next day and be able to do all those projects and be present with your family so that you don't feel like you're missing out and having to escape your life. And that is one of the biggest things that I want for you to understand. It's not about the what. It's about who you need to be to follow through on the what. Because if you are who you need to be, I guarantee you will figure it out. I guarantee the person, if you know who you need to be, you are going to figure out all the what's and the how's that you need to figure out if exactly this strategy didn't work for you because you're like, oh, but I could tweak it and try this. But if you're just always following the what and trying to be the same person you are now, it'll always feel like a struggle. And it's okay. So, quick review. Balancing our energies, doing versus being. Why are we afraid to slow down? Answer that. Start incorporating small chunks of being in your day. Take your pulse, have a breath, go for a walk, take a nap, stretch for 30 seconds. It doesn't have to be a lot. Intersperse them throughout your day. Eliminate distractions when you are with your partner, with your kids, having your me time. Be present. Don't distract yourself from your distractions. Watch the TV if you want to watch the TV. Engage in things that make you feel the way you want to feel from your me time so that you don't need excess amounts of it to go to sleep on time. And then, when bedtime comes, because you've decided on a trigger, you're going to direct your brain and understand that this discomfort you're feeling is just something you have to surf. It's going to cross. It feels uncomfortable. And then once you're in motion, the wave passes and you are now honoring who you want to be and how you want your life to be. Because I can guarantee you showing up in your business while rested is going to change your life and it is going to change your business. So I hope that that has been a really fantastic insight and in how to go to bed on time. Ready to begin each day feeling energized and focused? I'd love to work with you one-on-one. -on -one. In my Becoming Limitless program, you're going to learn how to optimize your brain and body with science and biohacking so you can be highly productive and grow your business faster. Join me over at tanessashears.com slash work with me. I'll see you there.